Hey, this is part two of part two, or B of part two, if you will. I talked about this need for larger facilities. Well, the good news is that I think we have some of the answers being built in mainland China in terms of some of the convention and, and event convention exhibition centers. And maybe we're actually anticipating that trend, which actually uh, an offshoot of the Olympics and the World Expo, but I think it's been and will be the positive change for China. Uh, the venue landscape is still overall in China is still about exhibitions, 150 exhibition halls of 10,000 square meters or more, and 3,500 officially uh, official exhibitions worth 6.2 billion uh, in terms of uh, Rim and B. So. It's still focused there in the larger facilities in Beijing and Shanghai and uh, Dongguan and Guangzhou and Shenzhen and so on are still very much focused on exhibitions. But the difference here and what I want to point out is the China National Convention Center is changing that landscape. In their first year, they did 690 events and 38% of those were corporate. 38% were corporate, but 24% were associations, only 12% exhibitions. So it's a very different mix of business, and I think that's the, the key to what we're talking about here. Uh, the left side shows the overall facility. It was the press center at the Olympics. It's in the Olympic Park. Uh, behind it, by the way, on the far left side is the Intercontinental Hotel, and right behind it is their own hotel, the Grand Hotel that's uh, associated with it. Uh, both are relatively small for convention centers, but they do connect to the center, and I think that's an important element. The top right side is the plenary hall. In other words, they haven't taken an exhibition hall and converted it into a place to do a general session. It's a separate facility. And above it, on the same end of the building, which is, as you look at the facility there, is on the left side, uh, is the ballroom space. So they built a fancy, very elegant, very nice ballroom space. On the right side of the building, if you go to the furthest right side, that's where the exhibition hall portion is. So it's a combination of them. It's very good, very well run facility. Uh, the Shanghai Expo is very similar. Now these are renderings. The facility is now open. Uh, unfortunately, in the area where it's at, there are no hotels immediately around it. I think I've mentioned that before. But you see their ballroom space depicted on the right side, and I've been in, seen it. It looks very much like that rendering. Very nice, very quality, very large. Uh, the lower picture that you see there is of the pre-function area, if you will, between the facilities. Uh, now, they have some pretty amazing facilities, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because uh, one of the other groups may talk about it, but here's what, what we're getting at. Look at the numbers of people. The convention hall, 5,700 people. The ballroom, 3,000 people. The auditorium in the Shanghai uh, World Trade Center, or excuse me, World Expo Center uh, is 2,500. And here's an even more critical, important point of where we're going, is Shanghai has 106 meeting rooms, 11 of which can seat those 200 people we talked about. And in Beijing, it's 100 uh, meeting rooms, three of which can seat as many as 540 people. So I think what we're seeing is maybe, maybe these venues are starting to capture what that number is in terms of size. Uh, for example, here's a conference that was held, a corporate conference that was held at China National Convention Center. Uh, Walmart uh, held their China conference there. And give you some of the numbers, it was held in January of this past year. They had 4,000 attendees from 39, or from 3,000, excuse me, 329 stores, 79 suppliers. They used 13,000 square meters of exhibits, but they also had meetings and they had meeting activities that went on, and that's what you saw in the previous slide. So, that's an important element of what an exhibition and a corporate meeting and the difference between them and association meetings and similar aspect having exhibitions associated with their meetings. So we need to ask these questions. You know, do we need larger meeting space? You know, what's the ideal space for a hotel or convention center in Asia? Is China National Convention Center large enough? Shanghai uh, World Expo Center, are they large enough? You know, how much space should they have in the process? I'm leaving those for questions to you to ponder and think and rationalize, and perhaps you might see that in a future question. So the future is bright. 
for mainland and the future is bright for greater China in terms of its development of size. Again, as I go back to saying Macau is certainly one of those that may be answering that question. We'll talk more about that later when we get into our preparations for Macau. But let's talk about ourselves. Let's talk about Hong Kong and its position in greater China. Talked a lot about what that development is in mainland. Uh, Hong Kong has been more sophisticated in this market, more established in this market. So what does it mean to Hong Kong? Well, the major convention and exhibition centers in Hong Kong, as you see, and we've talked about previously, are the, uh, excuse me, caught up my notes, the Hong Kong uh, Convention Exhibition Center, HKCEC, right on the water in the harbor, and Asia World Expo. And then you also have uh, HITEC, uh, which is a much smaller facility. We're not going to spend much time talking about that. That's an older facility for more regional and local business. So let's talk about those that are from the international perspective. Uh, you see uh, Hong Kong uh, HKCEC and Asia World Expo, both uh, large facilities and located in, and with slightly different kinds of markets between them, located in different aspect areas of the city, of course. The TDC developed HKCEC back in 1985 and 97 it was expanded again in 2009 it was expanded. Uh, they built Asia World Expo uh, in phase two exhibition because of demand because there was more demand for exhibition space than could be accommodated in the Wan Chai facility itself. We're looking at figures in the neighborhood of 75 percent occupancy as you've heard and you'll hear more in the management side of things that when we talk about it that's a big number and we see the Hong Kong uh, the Hong, Hong Kong Tourism Board, or MEHK, Meetings uh, Exhibitions Hong Kong, sees Singapore and Macau as major competitors in that market. And again, those are the integrated resort cities, if you'll think about it that way. Uh, Asia World Expo alone uh, created over 2,000 jobs during the construction period of time, 150 employment directly in the operation, another 800 that work shows going in and out in various aspects. Uh, HKCEC's expansion. In the first year of operation, $1.4 billion in additional revenues and 3,600 uh, 3, jobs. Uh, you'll see the, the most recent numbers that we've, uh, we've talked about previously, and I'll, I'll, I'll reference them, uh, that between uh, July and June, July of 2010 and June 2010, there was a 25% increase in the total number uh, of events and the attendance, rather, over 6 million, and there were 1,300 and 1,235 events in HKCEC alone, only 116 of those were uh, in the exhibition area. So we don't have to say too much more about that. I think that we know that MICE is important to Hong Kong. Uh, the number of conventions and attendees in 2009 was 1.16 uh, million overnight people per capita of 6,932. Uh, per day spent, which is up 2.7% 2, 2, 2 since, since uh, 2008. And their average length of stay, uh, 4.7 days, which is a, an important element because you see the convention attendee stays longer than the leisure attendee. So there's a more of an impact overall to the city. Uh, some more very recent numbers in terms of where they're coming from, uh, as you'll see, the growth, Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific is where the, the large growth aspects is, as well as mainland China in terms of percentages, uh, and from Macau uh, in terms of where the attendees and overnight stays are coming, arrivals from the uh, major markets, where they're coming from, from around the world. Uh, needless to say, uh, you know, the America's still down uh, in the process. Of, that's one of the, the challenges that uh, in Europe is, is level in terms of where we're at. When those markets recover, uh, business gets even greater. Uh, convention and exhibitions in Hong Kong uh, was really enhanced further by establishing the Meetings and Exhibitions Hong Kong, or MHHK, back in 2008. Now, in fact, Hong Kong has been in the convention promotion for a long time before that. They just put an actual label on it. But it now allows them to be a one-stop shopping for MICE organizers coming to Hong Kong looking at all the types of venues, not just HKCEC and Asia World. Uh, they, they say that they did, uh, in 2009, 1,090 uh, groups, uh, 590 for future years. In other words, they're looking at beyond 2009 or 10 or 11 here into the future. Uh, the government actually earmarked $150 million Hong Kong dollars for 
a five-year commitment to uh, the mice industry back in 2008 and 9. And we also want to talk about this uh, promotion opportunity within something called the CEPA or the Closer Economic Partnership Arrangement between Hong Kong and the mainland and the uh, Greater Pearl River Delta. Uh, conventions and exhibitions are a part of that uh, program and they're a part of what that uh, is evaluating. Uh, the exhibition impact on Hong Kong. Now, as I said, the Big E from Hong Kong. And uh, Hong Kong ISEA is the exhibition and convention um, uh, organizers, is who we're talking about here. These are their statistics from 2010. Uh, what you see is increases, increases over 2009 in terms of total number of people. Uh, strong comeback for international visitors up by 18%. Mainland China represented a 10% increase. At the same time, the uh, number of local visitors to trade shows also jumped and incremental number of space jumped. So we're seeing growth, 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 growth. That's what we're talking about here, keeping those occupancies up. Uh, relationships in that greater Pearl River Delta, are they really, are these facilities in Guangzhou, Shenzhen, uh, Dongguan, uh, Zhengsheng, uh, Zhuhai, are those competitors or are they complements? Are we able to work together in that process? And the, the CEPA is designed to try and uh, do some more along those lines in terms of where we're at. Uh, this is a, an, always an interesting challenge between us. Uh, the, the views towards this cooperation from mainland, it, you know, it creates an organization to create promotion and management of convention and exhibition activities between the, between the regions, allowing people to go back and forth easier, perhaps. Uh, Hong Kong and Macau see, you know, competitions, natural uh, cooperation maybe as a good political strategy. A uh, survey in, in 2010 found in the convention and event side that 79% felt that the uh, cooperation was benefiting them and 94% uh, benefit to, 94% felt that it was benefiting uh, business establishments. So those are very positive kind of numbers. Uh, certainly one of the big things in the future horizon here that we all should be looking forward to in our field because it will make things closer even if they are not necessarily in reality closer and that's the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, which is well underway on the other side, and hopefully one day will start its uh, construction on this side that at least make transportation between the uh, the two areas uh, better. A couple of years ago, uh, one of uh, Chloe's classes, actually uh, Chloe Lau's classes, put this together, and I think it's a pretty good depiction uh, and maybe a good uh, summary of where we're at in terms of the process. If you look at each of the areas and, and how where they stand, you see Guangzhou is in the convention, the national convention uh, area, current future leader, certainly in exhibitions within the national, within mainland. Uh, and there's a current focus on more international exhibitions with the facilities they have. Uh, Dongguan, uh, they're looking for exhibitions, uh, national and provincial, so it's a regional area. Uh, Shenzhen also looked at in terms of being regional, at least that's the perspective here. Maybe perhaps if some of you are looking at those facilities, you'll have a different perspective. Uh, Hong Kong uh, is current and future leader in international conventions as well as international exhibitions. So you see it as being in the forefront. And Macau has a future in meetings and incentives, but I would personally say that I think in the convention market, especially the international convention market, as that bridge develops as other things happen, you'll see them grow in the international convention market. Maybe not as much in exhibitions, but certainly in the international convention market. So let's summarize what we talked about in this part. Are we building convention venues big enough? That was really the initial first discussion that we talked about in part two. Are we tracking the trends? Is our CNCC and China World Expo Center, are they going to meet the trends? Is that where we're going? What's going to happen with other convention facilities? In Hong Kong and the greater Pearl River Delta, What's the impact on Hong Kong of all these other facilities? And what about Hong Kong's facilities? Can they grow? Is there a place for us to develop? We've talked about that previously. You know, SEPA may be one of those advantages for us, and then the bridge to Macau. Uh, so what is our positioning in greater Pearl River Delta? Are there other competitors coming along? Those are the things that we need to think about from all this. So that ends our discussion on the uh, China development, and I look forward to seeing you in class when we will be actually seeing presentations on some of the facilities that are in the region.